Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm Mystical, and today I'm going to be bringing you a different kind of a video. As a matter of fact, we haven't done one of these in quite some time, as today I'm bringing you a quest modding video, with the quest 3 just around the corner. A lot of people have been wondering what exactly is going to happen to their quest twos right now? Are they going to become obsolete? And Meta has already answered that question by providing multiple updates to the Quest 2 to kind of prevent this, boosting our performance. This is not something everyone wants, as it does also impact battery life. Of course, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can only have the cake and stare at it. However, for those of you that don't necessarily worry about battery life, perhaps have the Elite Headstrap, perhaps have some sort of external power bank, I have more info for you. It's been a while since we've done a resolution boosting video on the quest, and now with the option of launching ADB directly on the quest without the need for a computer, we should be able to do this entirely on the quest. Do keep in mind that I will also show you how to do this with a computer, as the launching ADB on the quest method doesn't seem to work for everyone, which is really weird. Now for a few disclaimers, unfortunately, I know you hate this part, I hate this part, but it needs to be here. You will require developer mode enabled on your quest, so if for whatever reason you can't enable it or don't have it enabled, you will not be able to do this. This is simply because we're running ADB commands and you can't run ADB commands without having developer mode enabled. Second thing, this will not persist after a reboot. Unfortunately, every time you restart the quest, you will need to redo these settings. However, we might be able to get around this if ADB does work for you on the quest itself. You should be able to create a shortcut or a copy paste command, making this a lot, lot easier than if you had to retype in the commands every single time. With all that out of the way, let's jump right into the tutorial. First of all, let me show you the easiest method of getting all of this sorted. And that is going to be if you have a computer with SideQuest installed. In case you don't have SideQuest installed, the link for it will be down below. And you install that like you would any other application. Once you have SideQuest installed, you're going to want to connect your Quest with developer mode enabled to your computer using a USB cable. If this is your first time connecting your headset to your PC, you might need to accept a prompt inside the headset. Now, from here, it's super simple. Press this button up in the top right of SideQuest. You're going to have a few options here, including your GPU and CPU speed, which you can set to the highest. Do keep in mind, some apps already control this on their own, so it might make no difference and in case the app doesn't control this, yeah, you will get more performance. However, your device will have to work harder and therefore you will lose battery faster. And lower down, you've got your texture size. This is what is going to make the textures inside your headset appear a lot higher quality and a lot lower quality, depending on what you want. As I know, actually, quite a few Beat Saber players reduce this in order to get more FPS, since you don't exactly need the most beautiful visuals while slapping blocks. So once you select any of these, you just press on them, it applies it to the headset, and in most apps, you will actually need to restart them before you see the change come through. So you can see me restarting Beat Saber here in between changes. You can't do this on the fly in the app I've found. The difference in GPU and CPU speed might not be instantly noticeable, but the difference in resolution should be pretty instantly obvious. And to show this to you, I'm going to make it really, really obvious and set it to the lowest texture scale first, and then set it to the highest texture scale. And you can see the difference of that right here. And now we move on to the part that I believe most of you came here for, and that is going to be, how do we launch this on the quest itself? Now, let me make this very clear. You will need a PC once and only once in order to install an APK file. Or let me rephrase that. You will require a method of installing an APK file on your quest once. And that is because we need to install wireless ADB onto the quest. Now, to do this, you're going to want to visit this GitHub page, which I will, of course, have for you down below, and then scroll down to the bottom. As you see here, the latest version is 1.2 you wanna press on this APK file right here, and this will download it to your computer. Well, then what you want to do is you want to connect your quest to your computer, launch SideQuest, and install this APK file through SideQuest. Now, additionally, what you will require is some sort of terminal emulator. For this, we are going to use Termux, and I will also leave a link to the Termux APK down below that you can download, and you want to install that onto the headset in the exact same way that you installed wireless ADB. 
And now that you've got both of these APKs installed, you will need to run two ADB commands. So you can run them with your quest still connected to SideQuest by pressing this button up in the top right. Then you just copy paste the two commands I will have for you down in the description below. Now, before you disconnect your quest from your computer, you will first want to make sure you enable ADB over Wi-Fi once. You need to do this once on your PC for the initial connection, and then you should never have to do it again. I did test this and it does appear to work. To do this, go up to the top right of side quest, right up here, click on the little Wi-Fi icon, and then press on connect. After you're done with this, you can now disconnect your quest from your computer. Head over to unknown sources and launch ADB anywhere. Now do remember that we launched ADB over Wi-Fi inside SideQuest a little bit earlier. So what you want to do is you want to slide the slider once and then allow always. Then unslide the slider, press ADB TCP IP, and then slide the slider again. Once you do this, you should have two IP addresses show up. And once this happens, you know you are successfully connected and can now run ADB commands on the quest itself. Now let's launch Termux. Heading back over to unknown sources, find the Termux app and launch it. First of all, you will need to install Android Tools, which is actually the package that will allow you to run ADB commands. So to do this, write PKG space install space android dash tools. This will also be down in the description below. Then press enter. Do not worry if it looks like you're not actually typing. It's taking the commands. It's just not showing them for some reason. If it asks you whether you want to continue, type the letter Y and press enter. This will now install the package tools onto your system. After this, you should be able to write ADB space devices. Again, it might not look like you're writing, but you actually are. Press enter and you should have two devices show up on the ADB devices list. This confirms you are connected and we can now run all the commands that relate to CPU level, GPU level, and texture size, meaning you can change all of this on your headset now. I will of course leave all of those commands down in the description below, but let me show you just a few. You will want to type ADB space shell. This will bring you into the shell of your headset. Once you're in here, you just need to paste in the pair of commands that you want to use depending on which texture size you want to use. So for example, for 512, this is the pair of commands that you would use. And of course, I will leave all of these down in the description below. So you paste each of these in one by one, then press enter, and then you can launch any game you like. So here it is with 512, and here it is with 3072. All working perfectly right there on the quest without a computer. And this is my quest after multiple restarts, so I can confirm it does work. So there you guys go, a little bit of a different kind of a video, and I wanna start making more of these again, showing you how to get the most out of your older devices. When a manufacturer stops supporting a certain device and the bootloader can be unlocked, you bet I'm going to be on it. Even my OnePlus 8 Pro, even though it is supported still by OnePlus, is running CR Droid on the latest Android 13. My Xiaomi Mi 8 is running Windows 11, but that's that's a different story. But on top of that, it is also running Android 13. So I am a firm believer that these devices have a lot more power locked in them. We just need to be able to access it. And if you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this one works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below, where I would love to see you talking about this kind of stuff. And telling me what you have done with your quest to modify it to make it better. Thank you so, so much to all the lovely names going off to my right. Those guys are my Patreons and you guys are helping me out so, so much. So much love to you. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified of which content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace. Off-road. <laughs>